welcome to episode five of Recreating Cave Story and Unity. Um, sorry for the long wait, but uh, we're here now. So this is going to be enemies one, and um, there's going to be more enemies part, but they're not going to all be successive. Uh, enemies two, we're going to tackle after doing weapons, etc., etc. So enemies in Cave Story can pretty much be boiled down to three main components. The first one is movement. And this is how enemies will move around the world. Some of them bounce up and down like the critter. Some of them just fly up and down like the bat. And for example, the gravekeeper there, they just walk around. Um, the second part is hurting the player. And this is gonna be like whether they hurt the player on contact, maybe they throw projectiles. The enemies in case Stray have many different ways to like hurt the player. Most of them follow these two, but there are more ways to do it. And finally, how they get hurt by the player. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, so yeah, most of them will be able to just get shot and take damage, but some of them have weak spots, weak points, and are like impervious otherwise. Uh, so yeah, but pretty much, uh, basically every enemy in the game can be boiled down to these three components. So let's look at the bat, which is the first enemy we're gonna tackle. So the bat moves up and down, kind of like a pendulum. Um, in like it not not like a sideways pendulum I guess like it just moves up and down kind of like a sine wave uh, it hurts the player on contact and it takes damage if it hits by a bullet so we're only gonna cover movement and hurting the player in this episode because to get hurt by the player we need to tackle guns which we haven't tackled yet but that's what we're gonna do this time around so yeah let's jump right into it so here we are um, with the project as we left it, left it last time. Um, so first thing you want to do is go under sprites, under NPC, go to NPC Semit, and you're going to want to open it in the sprite editor, and make sure to slice it by cell size 16 by 16, okay? And if you do that, then you're going to get these nice 16 by 16 sprites. These ones don't fit perfectly, the grave digger and the big mushroom. But uh, we're not we're not gonna worry about those for now because we're just gonna worry about the critter and the bat for our introductory enemies. And yeah, then you're just gonna want to hit apply. I already did that, so I'm just gonna hit revert. Um, yeah, then we move on to the next thing. All right, let's create an empty here. Call it bat. And we're just gonna reset it and move it up to here. I'm gonna give it a circle collider, animator, sprite renderer, and yeah, that's good. Um, we're gonna want to put it on a new layer called enemies. Um, that that might not have been there before from last episode. I might have added that in. So just put him on a layer called enemies make sure that his sorting layer is entities this yeah this from last episode used to be player but i changed it to entities just because it's going to contain all entities not just the player yeah um so that's good now we're going to want to animate it so first of all sprite render we're going to go npc cement i'm just going to copy that and i'm going to choose this one so we're going to want to animate it, so to begin, uh, but to animate it, we're going to create a new folder under prefabs, call it enemies, and under enemies, create a new folder, call it bat, and under bat, we're going to put our animator controller for the bat, call it bat animator controller, go to bat, drag the animator controller into here, and now we can start animating. So we're going to create a new clip and just call it idle. Um, hit the red record button. So first order of business is just to select that one again. You have to remember you have to select another one, select it if you want to register it. Go to the next frame. Go pick uh, this one. Next frame this guy, and then we're just going to want to copy that, paste it here, copy that, paste it here. Now if we 
play it. He flaps his wings. Great. So now we can unpress the record button and just get the animator controller window. Drag it down here, and yep, idle is the default animation. Great. So if we play it, you're gonna see that he's just flapping his wings. He's not doing anything with those wings currently, but he's flapping them. All right. Um, so next thing we're gonna do is you wanna go under scripts and create a new folder. Call it say AI. Under AI, we're gonna wanna create a new C sharp script. Call it bat. Bat behavior we're later going to inherit from an enemy class, but we're not going to make that right now because we don't have to deal with health and other things like that. So for now, we're just going to have it derived from mono behavior. And um, there's a couple things we're going to need references to. First, animator, and in. Actually, no, we don't. I don't think we need a reference to the animator. We're just going to say sprite render, sprite render. Um, we're going to need a couple float values like float top x or float top y float bottom y and float x that's just going to be for the movement and uh, oh and we probably want to reference the player so player player so void start we're going to first want to initialize player so player equals player dot instance then we're going to want to initialize these three values so x is just going to equal transform.position.x. Top y is going to be transform.position.y plus 1.5. And bottom y is going to equal bat.position.y minus 1.5. And that's just going to like, we're later going to interpolate between these two. Oh, yeah, I need to have a t value for that. T equals. Actually, we don't need to define that there. We can just define that inside the function. We're going to create a void movement and a void. Let's just call it look at player. Because that's pretty much all that this baby's going to do. So, first, look at player is pretty easy. We're just going to say sprite renderer dot flip x equals player dot transform dot position dot x is greater than x. Um, so yeah, basically if the player's position is to the right, then we want to flip x because the default position is looking to the left. And if it's lower than, then it's just going to um, not flip x and it's going to be facing that way. Uh, movement is pretty simple, so we're just gonna have a float t equals mathf dot sign. Let's say 1.5 f times time dot time, and then so basically what this is gonna do is it's taking the sign of time is just going to make time. It's just gonna make uh, this t over time. It's gonna make it like basically bounce between plus one and minus one. So it's just gonna kinda in a sine wave move up and down and up and down. And we actually want, because we're gonna use a lerp, we want it to be between zero and one, so we're actually just gonna change this to divided by 2.0f plus 0.5. And the 1.5 here is just to speed it up a little bit because otherwise it's gonna be really, really slow. So now we can just say transform dot position equals mu vector 3. So the x is just going to be x because the x is the same from the beginning. Um, and then mathf.lerp bottom y top y t. And then 0 because we just want to be 0 on the z. Great. Alright, so now let's go back to unity and see what kind of movement we get from our bat. Should probably actually just give it a oops, give it a default bat 
bright. There we go, just so we can see it. So now if we add the bat behavior to him, press play. Hmm. Nothing is happening. And I know why, it's because we never actually call these functions. Okay. Movement. Look at player. Now if we play, see what happens. Alright, the bat is moving up and down. He's not looking at us though. And that is a problem. It's because... Oh, you know what? I forgot to initialize the sprite render. So we're just going to say sprite render equals get component sprite render. If we do that, then we should be handy dandy. Alright, there we go. Now the bat looks at us, and he moves up and down in this fashion. Okay, so the next order of business is making it so that if the bat, if we touch the bat, then we're going to get hurt, just like with the other hazards. So, we're going to go to the bat, say, contact hazard, um, and let's just check on product settings, physics, that player and enemies collide. Great. Circle collider. So now if we play, we can see that if the player touches the bat, he gets hurt. Sweet. Boom. There we go. So yeah, that is enemies one. That's the first thing we're going to do with enemies. Um, yeah, and next time we are probably going to start getting into guns and actually get something that can hurt this bad. So, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.